What is up guys, welcome back to the channel. Today's reaction video is White Feather, the most hardcore American sniper. I think this should be quite good. Should be interesting. Smash that button if you enjoy this kind of content, guys. Smash that subscribe button as well, we'd really appreciate it. We're on a good roll with subscribers. We are, we're nearly, I think, this video's going out today, isn't it? We're nearly on 150. Yeah, we're about 100 away, I think. So yeah. smash that button, we'd really appreciate it. The most hardcore sniper, obviously, respect up to there. We yeah. always say that anyone who serves... Sniper must be like a quite a cool one in, in the military. It must be. Don't be wrong. Sounds it. It's scary as, it's brutal, mm -hmm. and I don't think I'd ever be made up for it. No. Obviously, if you have to, you have to at the end of the day. But I think if out of all the jobs, it's quite a cool one. Yeah. Potentially a little bit of a boring one, because I, I suppose maybe boring's not the word, because it's not really not boring with ones. But yeah, I get what you mean, Because you're kind of back alone a lot of the time, I'm guessing, yeah. scoped in on somewhere, yeah. aren't you? Yeah, I get what you but, mean. Uh, are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. It's going to be interesting. Let's see what we got. The most hardcore American sniper ever, I'm assuming. What we got? The weather was humid and extremely hot, and sniper Carlos Hathcock and his spotter John Roland Burke were tired from running around the Vietnamese jungle looking for their next prey. Okay. Still, Hathcock remained unfazed. Peering through his binoculars, the experienced gunman quietly inspected his target, a feared counter-sniper known as the Cobra that had become his nemesis while fighting against the North Vietnamese. But Hathcock was confident that the Cobra was no better than him. After all, the you brave soldier had a $30,000 bounty on his head, the highest ever for an American sniper in Vietnam. $30,000 bounty. After failing the first attempt, Cobra and Hathcock ran deep into the jungle in a cat and mouse game until the two men were within sight of each other. They then aimed their rifles at each other, and what happened next only cemented the so-called White Feather Sniper as a Marine Corps legend. Okay, sounds like a, okay. a legend. Yeah. A $30,000 dollars Vietnam. Feather. That's a lot, a lot of money for him. Carlos ready. Hathcock took part in two Vietnam tours. The 5 foot 10, 120 pound sniper never willingly took a day off, and he volunteered for so many dangerous missions that at one point his commanding officer had no choice but to restrict him to his quarters. Wow. I mean, fair Hathcock pay, mainly yeah. used the standard Winchester Model 70 306 caliber rifle with an 8 power Unertl scope, and on some occasions he also used an M2 Browning machine gun. It was with his Winchester rifle that he set the record for the longest confirmed sniper dispatch at 2,500 yards, Ooh. a record that remained unbroken for 35 years. 2,500 wow. yards? As the sniper's notoriety grew among the Viet Cong and the North Vietnamese Army, the enemy started to refer to him as Du Kish Long Trang, or the White Feather Sniper. The nickname referenced the white feather that Hathcock used to carry on a white band in his bush hat. Okay. The feared sniper took so many lives that he soon had a bounty on his head. While rewards put on American snipers by the People's Army of Vietnam typically ranged from eight to two thousand dollars, Hathcock said it was worth thirty thousand dollars. That's mad. On one right. occasion, after an enemy sniper platoon was sent to hunt down the White Feather, many Marines in the same area decided to wear the distinctive White Feather on their hats, thus deceiving the North Vietnamese and further complicating the counter sniper's job. Okay, I like that. Still. Of holding the record if for the they're high... specifically hunting that guy, yeah. then it is throwing him off. But then you're kind of putting yourself at danger, aren't you? Yeah, I guess you are, yeah. Fair play, because you're kind of protecting your yeah. mate as well. But well, you, yeah. you're a target. Why, if ever they're looking, boom, oh, wait, it wasn't him. But still, you're, you're then even more of a target, aren't you? Because yeah. I think there's a $30,000 bounty. Well, exactly, and it's, it's not... They might not be the one they're getting. Yeah, exactly. But I, I kind of like it, because you're backing your mate yeah. up as well, aren't you? Highest bounty... Hathcock shot and annihilated every marksman that tried to get him. Carlos Hathcock. Carlos Norman Hathcock II taught himself to shoot and hunt from an early age, mainly out of necessity to help feed his family. Oh, that's oh. Throughout his childhood and early adolescence, Hathcock and his dog would venture deep into the Arkansas wilderness, where he pretended to be a soldier and hunted imaginary Japanese soldiers using a 22 caliber J.C. Higgins Imaginary. single shot rifle Bless that his father brought back from his service in World War II. Wow. So that must have Growing been Growing up, what? Hathcock Definitely. dreamed of becoming a United Beam States fluence. Marine, and he achieved it in 1959 when he enlisted in the service at 17 years old. It's crazy. By 1965, the young Marine had won several shooting championships and prizes, such as the Wimbledon Cup, the most prestigious award for long range shooting. Wow. Hathcock arrived in Vietnam a year later and started his first deployment as a military policeman, 
protecting soldiers and resources on army installations and enforcing military laws and regulations. Okay. However, Hathcock wanted adventures, and he soon volunteered for combat. That Captain day, Edward James I... Land, an officer who pushed the Marines into preparing snipers in every platoon, personally hand-selected Carlos after learning of his sharpshooting records, and the Arkansas natives then became a sniper. Yeah, I think it makes sense. If you've got all the records winning the cups and well, stuff like that. Well, if you've heard this guy's like the best of the best, you're going to want him, aren't you? And he wants to go yeah, in. It's like, you're going to say, why would you say no? Yeah, have this sniper. You show me how to yeah, shoot. Why would you, <laughs> you know what I mean? No? You just wouldn't, would you? <laughs> Hathcock was then transferred to the 1st Marine Division Sniper Platoon stationed at Hill 55, 10 miles southwest of Da Nang, where he would become a Marine Corps legend and the Vietnam War's most lethal sniper. Hmm. Apache a lot sniper. of respect, I think yeah. he's got a lot of respect. Hathcock was not the only infamous sniper lurking within the Vietnam jungle. Okay. There was also an alleged female platoon leader, interrogator, and sniper on the Viet Cong side that the Marines nicknamed Apache, and she was known for her sadistic methods while operating in the Vietnamese jungles long before Hathcock arrived. According to several accounts, Apache was as beautiful as she was lethal. And she was not only known for her leadership and sniper skills, but also for her propensity towards torturing American GIs. It is said uh, that she would I often know, place right, herself. Is on both sides. Technology is not very good yeah. in the Vietnam War. It's a lot yeah. lower than what it is. How do they know it's one person getting all these kills? Yeah, it could be. It could be anyone really. Is it? Is it just a case of there's been a lot of sniper kills and they just a credit? They've seen someone, seen someone with a feather, and they're crediting them. Don't be wrong. I'm not taking anything away because I'm sure amazing sniper and he did all these. And his teammates will back him but up. But is there a proof? Stories. Not even proof, because I think the teammates will back mm. him up. I think though, the stories will come out and all that, of which we've got. Yeah. But if you're on the other side, and the technology isn't as good, and your mates are dropping, like if you were in the Vietnam, and you, they were dropping, how do you know it's that person? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, without hearing them stories, and how would you hear them stories on the other side? If that makes sense. Yeah, it does, but Do you, I don't know. I don't know the answer. I don't know, because <laughs> you always hear stuff like this, and it'd just be interesting to know how that relates, you know? Mm -hmm. Self and her victims near U.S. Army bases to ensure that the other American officers could hear the agonizing screams. Ooh. Apache That's and her horrible. crew operated around Hill 55, which was Hathcock's base, and her weapon of choice was a 7.62mm Model 44 Russian-made Mosin Nagant rifle with a scope. In November of 1966, after taking the life of one of his closest comrades, Hathcock searched the vast landscape for the sniper, but kept returning every night with no news. It is said that late one I'm afternoon, on a mission. Captain yeah. Edward James Land spotted a small-framed Vietnamese woman carrying a rifle that fit Apache's description, accompanied by five Viet Cong armed guerrilla members. As the American duo approached the group, Hathcock and Land treaded carefully and waited for the right time to shoot. Okay. Finally, as the woman squatted down to relieve herself, Land called in an artillery barrage on the group of Vietnamese snipers. Realizing that they were being ambushed, the group started running towards them as they were being shot, and Captain Land ordered Hathcock to take her down. I bet According he did. to accounts, Hathcock so. quickly attacked Apache with his Winchester sniper rifle, and as the woman fell to the ground, he shot one extra bullet at her for good measure. Afterward, the men stared at each other in disbelief, and a few seconds later, the silence turned into screams and laughter. They had just put down the most lethal woman in Vietnam. What wow. a mad, like, the emotions of that. Yeah. Like, the focus of, because, like you said, she killed his mate and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, the emotions of that getting revenge, and then, like, the relief after the lack. Yeah. What was brutal, in it? Crazy. So many emotions. And fair, anyone who served, I know I always bang on about it, but fair play. You know what mm. I mean? Fair play. Carlos Hathcock was constantly chased by another North Vietnamese known as the Cobra a feared counter-sniper that used a powerful Masin Nagat 9130 rifle with a scope. The feared gunman had made it his personal mission to take down Hathcock, and took several other Marines in the process, including a gunnery sergeant outside of Hathcock's own living quarters. Wow. Outside the living Hathcock quarters? Hathcock later recalled well that upon close. finding his fallen comrade on the floor, quote, I took a vow right there and then. I was gonna get him some way on or another. Mm -hmm. The American recognized that Cobra was skilled, it was only a matter of time before one took the other down. However, he was confident that as good as his enemy was, he was not better than him. One day, Hathcock and his spotter, John Roland Burke, departed base with their gear and began to trail the enemy sniper in the Vietnamese jungle near their firebase, Hill okay. 55. 
As the Cobra spotted Hathcock and his team, he silently aimed at the American sniper. However, Hathcock accidentally fell over a tree, and the shot missed, hitting Burke's canteen instead. That's bad looking. Like, After failing the shot, when you Cobra shot. left his position and ran deep into the jungle, and the two opposing marksmen and their spotters ended up on the opposite sides of where they'd started. Unfortunately for the North Vietnamese, they were now facing the sun, and a glimmer of light reflected Ooh, off the sniper's I scope. See. Upon spotting the glint within the bushes, Hathcock immediately took his rifle and fired at his nemesis. Always need a little bit of luck, don't yeah. you? Yeah. Definitely. In life. Upon approaching his victim, he was shocked to find out that his bullet went straight through the Cobra's scope, Whoa. hitting the counter sniper right between the eyes. <gasps> I mean, Hathcock what a shot. Took possession of the counter sniper's Whoa. rifle, hoping to take it home as a trophy. However, the weapon was eventually stolen from the base's armory. Oh, wow. That's how the guy with the watch is on the yeah. runners, isn't it? Through. <laughs> Believing that Tathcock was burned out after his recurring dangerous missions, the top American officials decided to discharge the sniper in 1967. Makes sense. He'd done yeah. a lot. However, yeah. he re-enlisted after only one week back at home with his what wife and child. The Patriot wasn't trained on anything else and was a Marine through and through, wishing to continue protecting his country wow. and his comrades. Mad. Hathcock was then assigned to the rifle teaching team in Quantico, Virginia, but he wasn't happy there and was eventually sent back to Vietnam, taking command of a sniper platoon. On September 16, 1969, the LVT-5 amphibious armored fighting vehicles he and his team were riding struck an anti-tank mine mm. along Highway 1, north of Landing Zone Baldy. The vehicle burst into flames immediately. Determined to save as many lives as possible, Hathcock went back and forth and kept enduring the flames as he pulled seven marines from the blazing vehicle before collapsing in a rice paddy, unaware of his own injuries. What a guy. Several oh other marines then days. came to his rescue and placed him in water. Hathcock and the seven rescued marines he pulled from the vehicle were then evacuated by helicopter to the hospital vessel USS Repose. They were then taken to a naval hospital in Japan and at last to the burn center at Brook Army Medical Center in Texas. The incident left him with burns on 43% of his body, 43%. some of which were third degree, thus ending his career as a sniper. Aww. While in recovery, Hathcock received the Purple Heart, followed by a Silver Star for his brave performance in Deserved. the amphibious tractor yeah, incident. Definitely. The Marines tried to retire him once again that same year, but they had no luck. He didn't go back out, did Quantico. he? He seems to really like just have a heart for it. Just He's still a young 27-year-old, desperately it? wanted to fight even though he was walking with a limp and beginning to suffer from mobility issues. As such, the top brass decided to send him to Spain to work as a gunnery sergeant on the USS Simon Lake submarine tender. Okay. However, when a new commander arrived at the vessel in 1975, he was stunned to find that Hathcock could no longer move without help. The sniper was then sent to the hospital, where his doctors revealed a grim diagnosis. He was suffering from multiple sclerosis. After receiving the terrible news, Carlos Hathcock moved back to Quantico's Marine Base, where he helped establish the Marine Corps Scout Sniper School, providing sniper instructions to police departments and I bet he loved doing that yeah. including SEAL Team 6. It sounds like as long as he's Because helping. of his multiple injuries yeah. and his evolving disease, Hathcock was continuously in pain, but dedicated himself to teaching a new generation of snipers. Wow. However, his health continued to deteriorate, and in 1979, the legendary sniper collapsed while teaching a class. With no more mobility, and only 55 days short of his 20th anniversary of enlistment, the beloved instructor was forced to retire. Aww. Legacy Carlos Hathcock remains a legend among the U.S. Marine Corps, and even has an award named in his honor, the Gunnery Sergeant Carlos Hathcock Award. Oh, fair play. Presented annually, this award was established to, quote, recognize an individual who has made significant contributions in operational employment and tactics of small arms weapon systems which have impacted the readiness and capabilities of the US military or law enforcement. And big sacrifices yeah. as well. Hathcock would say during an interview that he only survived as a sniper because of his ability to get into a concentration bubble, putting himself into a state of complete, utter and absolute focus with his equipment and his environment where every breeze and every leaf meant something, wow. then also focusing on his target. In the end, Hathcock had almost a hundred confirmed lethal hits of Viet Cong personnel and North Vietnamese. However, such actions had to be confirmed by a third party during the conflict, and it had to be by someone other than the sniper's spotter. These third parties were not always present, making confirmations quite tricky. 
especially when the target was behind enemy lines, as was commonly the case in Vietnam. I say it's impossible to... Yeah. Hathcock estimated that the actual amount varied between 300 and 400 enemy personnel oh. during the war. That's mad, isn't it? Despite his undeniable efficiency, the sniper always stated that he didn't enjoy the slaughter, and that the only thing on his mind whenever oh. he went on a mission was protecting as many Americans as possible. Thank you for Let's watching see. our Dark wow. Docs video. Literally dedicated his life yeah. to, like you say, fighting for his country, protecting Americans. So you guys can be free, and I know we're not Americans, but yeah. it's the same. We have the same, I mean, all armies are the same. Army. Definitely, people dedicate their lives, and the, the sacrifices they give and fair play, and uh, it deserves all the legs he's gone so mm -hmm. far, and oh my 100%. days, what a guy. Yeah, wow, didn't expect it to be like that. No, I mean, either, I didn't, yeah, I didn't really know what to expect, yeah. but smash the like button, guys, smash the subscribe, and we'd seriously appreciate it, and what should we do? Have a fantastic day. And we'll see you, legends, in the next one. Peace.